Let us pray. Thank you, God, for this blessed time. Thank you, God, for helping us to experience your presence among us. God, as we prepare our hearts and minds to receive, to listen to your words, let the same spirit with whose power that it has been written, let the same spirit speak to us so that we will be listening to you. We commit all of us in your mighty hand. Bless us, be with us, and guide us. In Jesus' most precious name we pray, amen. Good morning and greetings to you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, we are in the Lenten season and the second Sunday in Lent and uh, for fifth Sunday before Easter. And today we are going to look at the theme, the life-saving faith. So we know what is faith. Genesis 1-1 till Revelation 21, we can use any verse as the definition of faith. But even then, there are some very particular things that, we, that will be coming into our minds when we talk about faith. Hebrew 11.1, 1, it says that believe in the unseen. So we, we believe that something is there. We believe that God is there. We believe that God is standing next to me. That is that we cannot see with our own eyes, but at the same time that we believe, because we believe that we are breathing air, even though we cannot see air. So like that, faith is believing in what is not seen or, or unable to see. Genesis 15, 5 says that faith is a trust in God's promise. Abraham was asked to count the stars, the number of stars in the sky, and Abraham is asked to count the sand. We know how is it possible. It is not possible. But it is trusting that God says to Abraham that I, will, I am going to give you children as if you can count, you count. That many number of children that God has promised to Abraham. And James chapter 2 verse 17 says, the faith is action. Faith is not what simply that believing in unseen and also believing, trusting in God's word, but also that is translated as action in our life. And so on. There are a lot of things that I can share about faith that we all know about it. But now, today, according to our theme, life-saving faith, and I am planning to look at how such a faith will save our lives. For that, we have read four important, beautiful passages, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 7, and uh, Psalm 72, and Acts chapter 5, verse 12 to 16, and Luke chapter 5, verse 17 to 26. In these passages, we can, we can understand, we can realize how if faith is giving us life or saving our lives itself. So when we look very close by, uh, especially the, the gospel passage that has been read to us today, Luke chapter 5, verse 20, first says that through faith, we find the real problem in our life. So how to go to life? So we know, and actually one of my students' son is admitted in hospital yesterday. He was admitted. And he was saying that the blood test was, everything was normal, no issue in that. All other tests are normal, but fever is not coming down. So to, to settle that issue or to bring him home, bring that baby home, and they should diagnose what is the real problem. Once we diagnose the real problem, it is very easy to give medicine and to get healed. So faith is also like that. So here, Bible says that, Luke chapter 5, verse 20 says that through faith, we can find the real problem. Okay, shall we read Luke chapter 5, verse 20? It is written like this. When he saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven to you. 
What was the problem actually? The problem was paralyzed status of a man. He is paralyzed. But Jesus says the reason for that sickness is not something physical, but it is sin. That arose the, the, the fairy or, or the people who were around Jesus started arguing with Jesus. How come? Or, of course, it is inside. They, they were not asking directly. And they were thinking inside, how come that he can say like that? When the issue is physical, how come Jesus say that your real problem lies in your, in your, in your actions or in your heart? That is sin. Jesus says, friend, your, your sins are forgiven to you. Once a person uh, was searching his wallet. I don't know whether I have said this story or not. He was searching, he lost his wallet. And he was searching that wallet under a street light. He is standing there and he is searching like this. So uh, many people was, uh, uh, they saw that this person, what he is doing, and they were also coming and asking what happened. And he said that my, I lost my wallet and I am searching for that. So all they gathered with him and they, they started helping him. They were also looking here and there. Time is passing, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour, but they are not getting uh, this with his wallet or they could not find it. And one person came next to him, near to him and asked, uh, friend, what happened actually? And he said, as I said, my, I lost my wallet. Where did you lose it? He said, I lost somewhere, but since light is here, I am searching here. So most of us, we also will be like that in faith or in spiritual, spirituality. We might have fallen somewhere else, but we will be showing to others that we are really trying to come out of that problem. Like this man was searching for his wallet where there is light. At the same time, he lost somewhere else. Most of us are ashamed to really acknowledge in front of God that what has really gone wrong in us. We will think that God is going to punish us. Yes, of course, God will punish us. There is no doubt about it. But at the same time, God says that if at all you are confessing with a pure heart, with a pure mind, and at, at a hundred percentage agreement with God that we will not be continuing in that, God is ready to forgive even if you are the biggest sinner in this world. Peter says that I am the biggest sinner in this world, but God has saved me. Here, let us look at this man. He's a paralyzed man. He was not worried. And he found it, he understood that as the last chance that he has got, he got to be saved. He understood the chance that was given by his friends as the last chance in his life to be healed, and he really understood that his problem is not physical, but it is something spiritual. When Jesus is setting that right, the next moment he stood up and he was walking. So first of all, to be saved in faith, to save our life with faith, and we should find out what is the real problem in us? None of us are perfect, including myself. None of us are perfect. But at the same time, this paralyzed man is a perfect example that even at the last moment, we can reach Jesus and Jesus can help you out of the, any kinds of problem. But for that, we should not wait for the last minute because we do not know what will happen. Because last two weeks back, I was, uh, I was in, in Nilambur uh, attending a, in a program. Just the previous day, one person, two boys, they got a new bike and they went to the, the mountain top and they, there is a special uh, a tourist place, but the name of the place is the gateway to hell. The name of the, I don't know uh, how many of you know that place, it is, it is in uh, Nilambur. Uh, even if the name of that particular place is the gateway to, or the, or the bridge to hell, they wanted to cross that. Finally, they end up their life and two families uh, ended up their life in tears. So we should not wait for the last minute we, because we do not know whether we will get such time or not. But at the same time, this man fortunately got a last minute chance to save his life. Here, what that I would like to share with you is that to, 
through faith, if you want to be saved, first of all, we should set right our problems. Second, through faith, our inner self will find peace. That's what we find in the Old Testament passage, 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 7. Faith is the, the courage formed through failures. So what is, the, the, what is happening in the life of that widow and Eliza's life and widow with the oil? Complete life, total life was a failure. Her total life is a failure. Look at, as a human being at, a, at her life, she lost her husband. Husband died. Debt. And her children are going to slavery. The, the, the debtors are ready to take her children into slavery. Poverty. There is nothing left in her home. An empty house. What more that we want as a proof for a failed life. But at the same time, when she was directly going and approaching the right person, her heart was filled with peace. Prophet said, relax. And she asked, how come? How can you say that? My children are going to be slaves. I already I lost my, my husband. My house is an empty house. Nothing is left. Not even a drop of grain to eat. How come you can say that, relax? Yes. Prophet says, relax, because the one who is holding your hand is not me, but my, my guru, he is the God who created you and me. So relax. He relaxed. She went back, and she was thinking, what is actually happening? She found a small amount of oil in her home. That became the beginning point of the hope. Please note that God will never leave you empty that you cannot come back to Jesus Christ. Never. We will feel that it is finished, gone, end. No. Even at the last stage, even if you think that everything is empty, nothing is left, but there will be a small hope left for you. It is ultimately our responsibility to find out what is that. Through faith, that is possible. When we find that last hope, then you will start feeling a relaxed life, and that will be the beginning of the, the inner peace that God is ready to give to you always. And third, through faith, our body will find peace. Luke chapter 5, verse 24 and 25. Jesus said, he did. He finds a physical healing. Jesus said, he did. And he, find, he found the physical healing. What did Jesus say? Jesus said three things. One, stand up. Two, take up. Three, walk out. How did he come? He was carried by a few of his friends. But Jesus said to him, stand up. He stood up. Jesus said to him, take the, the bed that you were lying. He took. Jesus said to him, get out. He took that and walked out in front of everyone. This shows the authority of Jesus to save you even if you think that everything is gone. Jesus said, stand up, and we should do what that Jesus has said to us. Jesus will say, shut up. At that time, we should be ready to close our mouth. Jesus will say, get out, and we should be ready to do what Jesus said. Look at the life of Abraham. Jesus said, get out. What did he do? He did not ask, why? He did not ask, where am I going to? No. Jesus, God, Abraham just obeyed what God had done, God said to him to do, and what he had become. He became all of our father. Who are we? Who are we? Who are we? 
descendants of Abraham, offsprings of God, Jesus' brothers and sisters, and we, Abraham became the father of the faithful. If at all we are faithful, Abraham is our father. And God had promised him that go and count the stars and go and count the sand. That many numbers God has given uh, Abraham children. So, the first of all, Jesus said to him to stand up, and that shows the ultimate authority that is only lying in the hands of Jesus Christ, and we should be totally surrendering in front of Jesus' authority. Second, take up. Jesus said to him to take. Actually, that was not necessary. What did Jesus say? Till now, the bed was carrying you, and now you carry the bed and go. You know why? Actually, he does not need that bed anymore, but at the same time, Jesus is asking him to carry that as a testimony to show it in front of the others that so far I was lying down and Jesus said to me to stand up and walk and I obeyed him and now I am carrying the bed that was carrying me. That is the testimony. Each and every moment of our lives are reasons for our testimony and reasons to say that Jesus is my savior. Are we really testifying Jesus in our life? And Jesus said to him to walk. He did not allow him to stay there anymore. He said to him to walk as a proof of faith. Jesus said he obeyed and he became one of the biggest testimonies in the life or in faith. And fourth, finally, through faith, the society will find peace. When we find out the real problems inside our heart, and when we find our problems and when we, are, when we come out of that problem, our inner mind will find peace. And with that, our body will be healed. With that, the society will be healed. So the healing of the society is lying in your personal healing. So the two passages that have been read to us, Psalm 72 and Acts chapter 5, verse 12 to 16, is totally talking about that. You might know about uh, Ilango Adigal and his famous uh, epic, Silapadigaram. There is a famous statement in Tamil that Arasiel Pidatorka Aram Kutraga. So, what does it mean? It's, it says that when we, are, when we do injustice in politics and the justice itself will become the demon of death. So, here David in his last psalm he says that God has done wonderful things. He is a politician. For that matter, we are all politicians. We are all leaders. How? How many husbands are here? Sir, who is controlling you? I'm also a husband. We know that we don't have any control in our hands. Our wives will control us. So our wives are real politicians. They are leaders. But at least in front of others, we will say that we are the, the, the head of the family. So like that, we are also... Politicians, we are also leader. Actually, are we the real leaders or, 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 or a head of the family? No. Our children will control us. We will say that we will go to this church and my children, our children will say, no, no, we will go to other worship. Somebody will say, some children will say, we will go for Tamil worship. Or, and, uh, no, sorry, father will say that we will go for Tamil worship and children will say, no, no, we will go for English worship. So who is controlling? Our children are controlling. So they are also politicians. They are also leaders. See, when we do injustice, in a small, small responsibility is given to us. The Ilango article says that, and this is that is really true, that when, at the time of, when there is a need, even justice will become a demon of death, and we cannot be able to experience real justice in our life. So we are all politicians, we are all leaders, as we see in the life of David, and he says that God has kept everything in order. And for that, God used me. So what a wonderful statement that David is making there. And I am saying right now here, the system of the society is lying in your, in your hands. When you change, the society will change. When you change, the family will change. When family will change, the society will change. Acts chapter 5, verse 12 to 16, we, we, saw, we saw that with the power of the Holy Spirit, a lot of people are experiencing healing. See, the disciples of Jesus Christ, they were walking, and even the shadow of our disciple, Jesus' discipleship became the powerful instruments for healing. 
people are coming and lying down, the sick people, or bringing the sick people from their home and lying, making them lie in front of near the road. And if the sun hits the light on the disciples and that shadow hits on the, the people who are lying down and they are also getting healed. You know, you are nothing less than the disciples of Jesus Christ. Because we are all disciples of Jesus Christ. You are nothing less than the 12 disciples of Jesus Christ. Don't forget that. You are perfectly one of the disciples of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus' the number of disciples are not limited to 12. Even Jesus himself was selecting 70 and sending them. And they came back. And wonderfully, Jesus, see, the demons are coming and leaning in front of us. The sick people are getting healed. Jesus said, you don't worry about that. That is my work. What you need to worry? Your names are written in the, in the list of the, or, or the, in the book that we used to enter to the kingdom of heaven. Your names are written in heaven. For that, you need to be feel hap felt happy. We are nothing less. Maybe 2,000 members in this church. None of us are nothing less than these 12 or 70 members of Jesus' disciples. So these are the, the, the structure, how that we are getting healed. And for that, we need to do two things. One, say yes to God's yes. Second Kings chapter 4, shall we read? Second Kings chapter 4, verse 5. So she left him and shut the door behind her and her children. They kept bringing vessels to her and she kept pouring. The disciples of God or the prophet of God said to her to go in and borrow the vessels and kept pouring the small amount of oil that was left in her home. Even actually she was not aware of that. But as I said that God will never leave you empty. Definitely there will be a small opportunity that God will be keeping for you that you should find out. She found out. And she said to the prophet that I have a small amount of oil in my home. That is enough. That is more than, I don't know whether I have said this story before or not. If I have said, I'm repeating, I'm, uh, please uh, uh, forgive me. Uh, because this is one of the favorite stories that I always like to say. Actually, one, once, one man was living a very good life. And he thought, everybody says, thought that he will go to heaven. But unfortunately, what happened was he went to hell. So he started making all kinds of issues in hell. And he became a problem for even hell. And he started, he started shouting and making all kinds of noise, nonsense there. And he started shouting at God. And he had, he know that the, the story that no one, uh, that Lazar, and he know that if, if he shout from hell, God can hear from heaven. So he used that. He was shouting and asking God to help him. And he was questioning God and doing all kinds of nonsense. And God became fed up. And God said to one of the, one of the angels to go and uh, settle his issue. And the angel came and he asked this particular person, what that do you want? He said, I was doing everything according to the will of God and I was everything, obeying all the church rules and I was obeying, I was attending all the worship, I, I was giving tithe and I am doing all the things. But why did you put me, send me to hell? Please, I have all the right to come to heaven. He once again cross-checked with that, rechecked it, it, and he sent for second evaluation, third evaluation, like a theology, a college we do. Even if a student wants to send it for a second evaluation, they have a permission to do that. So like that, that angel also sent for second evaluation, third evaluation. Finally, even that went to Peter, and he also rejected. Finally, sent to God for the final decision. God also said, nothing can, that we cannot do, anything. Send it back again. But God said, okay, just ask him, if at all something that he can share to concert, to, to take it as a, uh, as, as a norm, to help him, just ask him and let me, let me know it. Bring it back to me, the, the, the case, bring it back to me. The angel went back to him, and I asked, God had given you a very good opportunity. See, can you identify and say one thing that you have done to a person who was in need? Then God said, God can help. 
he was thinking. He said that I was giving off a tree that everybody will do. That is nothing to do with because you are not, <laughs> you are not following the, 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 the real law of giving. Because what is, what is the real go- law of giving? Jesus said that this widow has given much more than anybody else. That is the real law of giving. And tithe, that is the real law of giving that we are not doing. And he was also not de- doing that. And he said that I was helping poor. That everybody will do to cover up their uh, the, the problems that they, they were they're undergoing or to cover up their bad image. Many people will do. Say at least one genuine thing that I can consider your case. And he was thinking, 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 and that finally he came to know that one, remembered that once I was helping a beggar when he was coming and standing in front of my home with a bowl full of rice. And he was asking me to give something to eat along with this rice. So what did I do? I gave him a chili. Angel said, okay, this is enough. At least you have done one thing. You have just filled hope in one person's heart. So this I will take to God. He took to that matter to God and God said, okay, so grant it. Bring him to heaven. So you know what this uh, angel did? He took a long stick and tied one, one chili at the end of this uh, stick and just dropped it just in front of him from the heaven. So he, now he is in hell and the angel is in heaven, right? Okay. Uh, actually, we do not know where hell is up or uh, heaven is up, but, but whatever it may be, for the sake of understanding, I am saying this. So as soon as he could hold that chili, he just uh, uh, caught it and he was holding that. So angels confirmed that he already, he's holding that and he just pulled it up. So he was so happy and he was looking that down, what is happening, the, the hell that he was lying so, so far, the oil, we know, no, the lot of stories that, that uh, we know about the, the burning oil the, uh, and the, the fire and the, the God, uh, the people are making, uh, the people, those who are going there, fry and the tandoori and all. So we, that all was happening, just, just for your imagination. <laughs> and he's going up. So he just pulled it up. So he's good, sl- uh, slowly, slowly moving up. So you know how many people probably might be in hell? An approximate number of people that we can find in hell? Any, any idea? <laughs> Many. Like that, there were a lot of people. They de- even did not do anything according to the will of God. There were a lot of people. So what happened was, they saw one person is going up. So you know what did, what did they do? As he is going up, he had two legs, right? Two people hold on one, one leg. So what is happening there in the heaven? The angel is pulling him up. So he is going a little more up. So now how many legs are there? Four. Four people came. Now how many legs? How many legs are there? Four people? See, in, in heaven or hell, normally there will be no uh, crippled or, uh, or uh, even if you are like that, and there will be, uh, you will not find like that. So let us see that four people, eight legs. Eight. Going up. Now how many legs are there? Sixteen. Sixteen people came. Now? 32, 64. The number is increasing, increasing. As angel is pulling this up, the number of people holding down is increasing. So actually God was so happy. God was happy that because of one person, a lot of people are coming to heaven. God was so happy. See, because of one of you, definitely hundreds of people will will come to go to heaven. If you really do, leave according to what is written in the Bible and according to the will of God. Because of you, many people will go to heaven. And that's what our call is also. Okay, now here, the person is going and now the last stage has come. So if the angel pulls once more, he will go to heaven. So the last minute, he thought, let us see once again what is happening in the hell. He was just looking down. Now he realized what is really happening with his own legs. He saw like a pyramid holding his legs. 
you know what he thought? Who gave this chili? I give the chili. So who should get the benefit? Who should get the benefit? Come on here. Be a real human being. <laughs> who should get the benefit? I should get the benefit. How come that benefit should be shared with somebody else? How come they should get it? No, they should not get it. You know what he did? He just shook his leg. You know what happened? That chili came out of that stick. Everybody fell down. And he, then the gate of the heaven was closed. God will give you small, small opportunities to you to go to heaven. Don't think that some, the, the miracle is that God is coming and taking you from the, the mouth of the lion and taking you to heaven. No. God will give small, small opportunities. God will keep small, small ways for you to go to heaven. For that you should say yes. What happened here? Kings chapter four, Second Kings chapter four, verse five. That that lady was saying to his children, "Bring vessels, bring vessels, as much as the vessels are there, and she is pouring, and this is filled." So say yes to God's yes. And second, don't say no to God's yes. This is the biggest problem in faith. I said two things that we should we should have in our life. We should do to save our life through faith. First, things I, first thing I said, say yes to God's yes. As long as the children were keeping the vessel, the oil was flowing. And second, don't say no to God's yes. That is also a problem. You know what happened here? Can, shall we read uh, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 6? When the vessels were full, she said to her son, bring me another vessel. But he said, but he said, there are no more. What happened? Then the oil stopped following. When you say no to God's yes, that is the end of flowing of blessings into your life. Just think, if at all that children were going and finding out new vessels, and if they have brought it in front of her, what would have happened? That oil, the flow of oil would have never ceased, never ceased, never ceased. These days, children are writing t public examination. Even my son is writing 10th the board examination. Normally, the children's prayer will be to help them to write examination well. I think last time I, I said the, almost the same, same uh, example. You know what will happen? At the end of the examination, they will forget about their prayer. Why I, am, I took the example of children not to hurt you the elders. We are also the same. We will not, we are not ready to sustain the blessing that God is ready to give in our life. God's blessing cannot be stopped. God's blessing will be stopped only when you say that enough. Unfortunately, we always say enough. Here, we should have a life-saving faith. To save our life, we should not block the blessing of God. Most of the time, because of you, God's power is limited. Don't forget. God has an unlimited power. But because of us, most of the time, God's power is limited. Because most of the time, we are fed up with continuous act of grace. To continue in, in faith. To continue to do something good. If at all we are having such a feeling, please note that God cannot continue to work. So don't say no to God's yes. Dearly beloved in Christ, we are in a London season. And we are looking for a, a better faith always. To have a better faith, first we should understand what problem lies in us. We should solve that problem first. When we solve the problem, our inner self will find peace. When our inner self finds peace, our body will find peace. When our body finds peace, the society will find peace. That is what is called the holistic healing of the society. 
and you don't forget that you are the channel of that blessing. Through you only God can do something. If you say no, God cannot do anything. If you say no, God cannot continue to do. If you say no, generations after generations whom God wants to bless and you are blocking that blessing. So let us continue in the act of blessing. Let us continue uh, to work as an instrument of God. Let us continue to work off the hand and legs and mind and heart and mouth and eyes and ears of God. So that let us save our faith. For that, may God bless all of us. Let us pray. God of grace, God of faith, God who blesses us. Thank you for calling us as the channel of your blessing. God, most of the time, we say enough when you want to continue to bless us. Help us to come out of that trap that the devil is bringing in front of us. And help you, and help us to help you to continue to bless us so that we will be a blessing for many. This is yours in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.